Good afternoon, everybody, Facebook world. I'm Corey Ryan, and we are back for another Let's Talk, Learn, and Have Fun with Bruce. Today we have uh, a new show. It's the third time we've been doing this, and we try to do something different every time. And today that different means we have kids um, being a part of our show, and that means a lot to us. Um, we know as educators and teachers and and school leaders that we're here to serve kids first and not being able to be in our buildings, in our classrooms with, physically with our kids is, is leaving a lot of people, um, you know, feeling like something's missing. Uh, this is definitely a stressful time for families and um, for teachers as well. And being able to be remote is, is a challenge that we're not used to. So being able to have kids as part of the show is a big win for us today. We hope to continue to evolve. Um, this program to provide y'all with information. We're still taking Q and A's and uh, we're just mixing it up with some of the fun that we we're talking about earlier. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our superintendent of schools, Bruce Guerin. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Uh, we're so glad that we're able to do this. Are you holding up that hand for me, Corey? No, I was trying to turn my volume up, sir. No headphones this time. Okay, <laughs> apologize. <laughs> We're so glad that we're able to get together with you like this in the community. This means so much to us to be able to connect like this. Uh, I, was, I keep imagining what this situation might be like if we didn't have the technology that we have to continue to connect with each other. So we're very grateful for these tools. We're very grateful to Corey and his team for putting all of this together that helps us to connect with you. I want to give a, a big shout out to our board of trustees who is working extremely hard behind the scenes to make sure that the district continues to run smoothly. The administrative team is doing an outstanding job of trying to guess everything that we haven't thought about in this new situation and head off uh, all of those issues before we, before we get to them. Um, they're doing a lot of work behind the scenes, a lot of thinking together. There's a whole lot of Zoom call going on um, and we're enjoying every minute of it. Uh, we're so glad to connect again with kids um, I know our teachers uh, and our um, administrators, our principals at the campus level are enjoying getting to see their kids again and connect a little bit, even though that's dropping into your household. So we're so glad you're here. There's a lot of great things going on. Um, device deployment happening this week at the elementary level um, for all of those families who need an extra device in their house to make sure that the elementary students are able to connect with the learning that we're offering. Um, I had the good fortune of chatting with a, a high school student today from Rouse High School um, and just getting a little bit of feedback about what their experience is like. Um, and that was great to hear a little bit about how things are going from the student's perspective. And we're gonna do quite a bit more of that as we go forward so that we can make sure that we're meeting individual needs. As you know, we've been making a big push for using this change as an opportunity to do something amazing. And so we continue to urge you to take a lot of time with your families to build those relationships, to take the time that you just normally wouldn't have had in the spring. The spring is usually such a crazy time and very busy for students and for families. And, and this has given us a little pause to say, what are the most important things to us and how do we manage those things in our life? We hope that all of you are well and healthy. We hope that you continue to be well and healthy and stay safe over this time. We urge you to follow the CDC regulations, to stay home, to listen to the advice that's coming out. Um, the more we do that, the less it will feel like we're in a crisis, but the better it will be for all of us. So with that, I'm gonna turn you back to Corey. All right, so I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions to get us started, Bruce, and then I'll ask some questions of our panelists. And then we will get to our first interview and to some of our fun. Um, first off, I wanna take a question from Kara. Uh, Kara Owen wrote this question and I think we can turn it into a bigger question of, of what we've been discussing about um, the school district and how we're moving forward. She asked specifically about will zoning continue in that discussion, um, but I think we can probably turn this into an even bigger question for you, Bruce. Um, with all of the things we had in motion going in before, um, we had to have our emergency closure of our buildings and move to this remote learning environment. Um, what is the status of some of the district initiatives that we were moving towards um, before all of this happened? Yeah, that's a really great question. And um, 
of course, these first several weeks, we've been focused entirely, almost 100% on taking care of the crisis and making the pivot that we've made from you know, physical classroom learning to emergency remote learning. And I call it emergency remote learning because really we uh, are not designed as an institution for the work that we're currently doing. And so it's been incredible to watch the pivot of everybody as we've landed ourselves in this position, but uh, we're by no means experts at it yet. And there's still a lot of learning that has to happen and a lot of adjustment that will be made as we go forward. Um, so we're focused on that for right now. Um, and we're kind of calling that phase one. Uh, as we dip into phase two, um, you know, then we'll start to have to think about what happens next. So if we open again, and how do we open again? Um, and what happens if we remain closed and for the rest of the semester? What happens in the summer? How do we plan for start of school next year? And so um, as we go forward, a lot of those items that we had that we were working on, zoning, hazardous routes, triple bell schedule, some of those things, we're going to continue to talk about behind the scenes, and we've been working on those things, but we will certainly be bringing those back to the table in the next month or so to make sure that we're prepared for next year. So you mentioned, and we talked a little bit about phase two, I'm going to pass it off um, to Dr. Benson team. Um, we launched Parent Hub on Monday. On Friday, we started last Friday, we sent some information to parents about what um, our remote learning will look like here as we continue to add new content to be shared um, and look different than from those first two weeks. Um, Dr. Bentz, our Chief Academic Officer, if you could maybe start us off and pass off to some of your team members to give some more details on uh, our district strategies for remote learning in this second phase. Sure, thanks, Corey. I will do just that. So I just want to say that uh, this first three days of phase two of the remote learning has just been uh, fabulous and beyond what we could have hoped for. I just time and time again, um, our, the flexibility and the agility and the intelligence of both our students and our, our employees and the people working to make this happen, our teachers, our people on curriculum, people in teaching and learning, our, our principals, our everybody, our cafeteria workers, everybody up and down the line is just been amazing. But so I'm um, talking a little bit about phase two. I think I will hand it over first. I don't want to monopolize the airtime. So I'll hand it over first to Jennifer Collins, our executive director of curriculum. Yeah, like you guys mentioned, we're so impressed by the work that our teachers have been doing and the work that our families have been doing to support students through this transitional time. Um, you know, through phase two, one of the things that is different for us is we are presenting new content to students during this time. And so parents and students will notice some opportunities for new content moving forward. Our curriculum teams did um, work to provide some ideas for remote learning options that we felt like would work well from kind of a remote way, um, as well as some different ideas for students to demonstrate their learning. And you know, it really varies as you think about elementary students to high school students. Um, the ways that students are going to demonstrate their learning are different. So for example, I have a fourth grade girl in my house and she is creating some Google Slides where she's writing down the things that she's learning and submitting them to her teacher each week. Where my high schooler is using Google Classroom and he is submitting assignments much like he would have done in a traditional setting. So it's been really impressive the different ways that our teachers are meeting the um, unique needs of their students. And I'm gonna hand it off to Kimberly to talk about what that looks like with our special programs. Sorry, I was having a hard time unmuting. Um, yes, we are uh, very excited about the plans that our um, special program staff is pushing out to support our students. Um, our teachers continue to collaborate with their general ed counterparts just to make sure that we have really great plans. Um, our related services providers are also starting um, to provide those services through Zoom. Um, we are working really closely uh, with each other to look at each individual IEP to figure out what are the strategies that are reasonable and accessible for each of our students 
of while they're at home um, trying to continue their learning. So we are very excited about the hard work of all of our teachers, um, as well as our instructional assistants and just the level of collaboration, um, working together to problem solve um, and communicate with our families. Uh, we're really excited to continue learning with our students. Susan, could you tell us a little bit about um, the new Parent Hub? This is Susan Cole, our Executive Director for Instruction and Professional Learning. Absolutely, thank you, Dr. Bentz. Uh, first of all, just a big shout out to my team, as well as all of our teaching and learning uh, counterparts. It really was a collaborative effort, curating the best resources to go on to this Parent Resource Hub. And uh, the top banner of that says, it's designed to provide supplemental academic and student mental health and wellness resources. And it really is a supplemental um, hub for parents. So it doesn't replace what the teachers are um, asking our, their students to do, but it's really about those students and parents that want supplemental resources. Um, just in a nutshell, there's several uh, buttons that you can click on to go to get further into that, such as um, special programs, uh, technology help, um, and one of the things that, and just to know, this is kind of a living document. We just added some additional resources today. And one of those was in the area of our health and wellness. And so just wanted uh, Bethany to speak a little bit about that. She is our coordinator of counseling services and social emotional learning. And she reached out today to add some additional resources. So Bethany, if you uh, give us a little bit more information about that. Hi, thank you so much for having me tonight. Tonight, I'm glad to be here with y'all. Let's see. Am I talking? Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, it's different. This is my first time on here. Thank y'all for having me. Obviously, I'm a newbie to this. I've been zooming with counselors all week, but this is my first one with other folks. So I just wanted to share with y'all that we feel just like everyone else does that the social emotional learning of students is so important, especially now. We're at home, we're adjusting to change, we're having to use all of those skills that our counselors have been working with kids on. I talked to the counselor today who said, I got to work with a kid and we were specifically talking about things they had learned and now we're really having to use those things. And so one of the things that we have created that will be shared specifically by campus is next week um, is social emotional learning lessons. They are currently on the Parent Hub, which is awesome. And then they will go out by each campus next week also, because we want them to come from the campus for the kids to see their counselors and be encouraged by them. And so they are gonna be focusing on topics like anxiety and stress, adjusting to change, problem solving. We know kids are at home with siblings and need to be able to work through some of those conflicts at home. And so um, we encourage you to check out those resources. They are, hopefully they're exactly what our families need right now. So check those out. And uh, one of the big things we had, and we're gonna have Bethany back on here in a little bit to talk about second step, one of the resources that we have available for parents remotely and we use in our classrooms when we get to be in our classrooms. Um, but before we get to that, I do want to, one of the other big things happening right now is uh, kinder registration and then pre-K registration next week. Um, so if Jennifer or, and or Kendra can talk about um, for those looking at home, looking for registration information, kinder is going on right now and virtually, and then pre-K starting, um, I believe next week. Um, Jennifer, yeah. you wanna start first on talking about kinder and then Kendra. This is Kendra, this is Kendra um, Winans over at state and federal programs. And uh, we have been working really hard to think about the future and all of the things we need in place to start up next year. So we are excited to say that kinder registration has opened and you can go online and start registering your kindergartner for the next school year, as well as we will be rolling out pre-kindergarten registration for our new full day program starting April 14th. And we will be doing that a little bit differently. You will, as a family, be able to call any elementary school and a person will answer the phone, take down some information, and then we will follow through on by a personal basis by phone to get the information we need in order to register. So we're very excited about this virtual life that we're living to be able to try some new things and really have a personal connection with families, hoping that this is the most simple way to reach out and get people registered for the next school year. I'm gonna go ahead and answer a question real quick. Uh, Carrie asked, thank you so much, Carrie, for your question. Um, I know because it comes from a heart of caring about kids. 
Um, you asked a question about LIC laptops, if there's a place where parents can bring laptops um, that they don't need so that kids that do need a laptop can have one. Um, we're in the middle of distribution of devices right now. Um, we've had um, staff members at elementary schools. Um, right now, we think we're good on meeting the needs of devices. Um, please let us have some time. And if we do get to a point where we are asking for donations, we will certainly come out with that. But right now, our team's focused on getting the things out um, and being able to deploy those in a safe way. So we're not in a position to be taking um, extra devices. Um, I know we're talking about stress and one of the most stressful things that we know our kids are dealing with. I'm gonna have to pass this off probably to Bruce. Um, spring events, specifically graduation, the question keeps coming. And Bruce, is there anything you can share? I know you have a high school senior too um, about graduation and just advice for parents with seniors. Yes, um, that's a great question. You know, uh, we're closed right now until May 4th, um, and that's really coming from guidance from the county um, and the governor. And so, um, you know, that leads us to not really know whether we'll be able to conduct those uh, final experiences or not. Um, of course, our, our first choice is to have everybody back at school as soon as we can and as soon as it's safe in order to be able to have some of those final experiences, especially graduation. However, we are having conversations behind the scenes about what happens if we cannot hold graduation at that regular time. Um, and so we're talking about different options and how that might work either during the summer or even when we come back um, from school um, in August. And so we will continue those discussions as of this time, we don't have any definitive answers for you, unfortunately. Thank you for, for sharing that update, Bruce. We're gonna, we're gonna move some stuff around in our program. Um, please feel free to keep asking your questions. Um, we will take questions again throughout the show and at the very end, we'll make sure we get another chance to take some questions, but this is Let's Talk, Learn and Have Fun and we're gonna pivot to our Have Fun. And um, Christina, we're gonna move to the Kahoot and we're gonna talk about Second Step while you get that queued up. So I'm gonna bring um, I'm gonna bring back on um, Bethany to talk about second step, and uh, it's gonna tie into our Kahoot. Can you talk a little bit about um, what is second step, and what are what are the resources available to parents right now um, through the Parent Hub um, that could help support some of that learning that has happened on social and emotional learning in our in our schools. Yes, second, second Step is our social emotional learning curriculum that we use with pre-K through fifth grade in Leander. And those lessons are taught every week by our teachers and they are followed up with practice activities. So just like learning to read, it's, you know, they do it a lesson and then you practice and you talk about it some more and you practice. And so they focus on skills like um, learning to get along with one another, um, resolving conflicts, learning to manage your emotions, because we know everyone has strong emotions and that is totally okay, but it's what you do with those emotions and um, that's so important and making sure that we can think clearly and make good decisions. And so um, those are all the skills that our teachers and our counselors are supporting at school too. So second step is the curriculum that we use. And as families, you have access to all of the songs and videos, um, everything your kids are doing in the classroom, you have access to that at home also. So while your kids may not be getting a direct lesson right now from, from their teachers, you can go back and watch the videos and the songs that they've used in classroom before that they're familiar with and um, practice those at home. If you go to the parent hub, you just go, there's a link right there. You go to secondstep.org and you just put in the activation code for your grade level and everything you need will be right there for you. And if you need help with that, please contact your school counselor. They will be more than happy to talk you through um, any of those questions and support you with that. Because those are great resources for families, good ideas that um, you can use at home also. So Bethany, do you think that, so I was able to get on and log in the second step. I was able to find the resources and I found some questions to ask everybody. Popped in three questions in a Kahoot from the fifth grade second step curriculum. And with that, we're gonna cue the fun, which is the Kahoot. Y'all can log in at home. Here's our game pen. We'll give you some time to get in. Um, these are gonna be three scenario questions targeted for fifth graders. And 
some of these questions are geared toward our more traditional way of how we operate. So please bear in mind that the questions are targeted um, on how students should respond um, to different situations if we were in schools. So there is gonna be a physical component to these in terms of how they react. We need some players. Who wants to play some Kahoot? All right, we got Tara. We're gonna have this Kahoot live as well as we continue to, to link back. Um, we're gonna wait for a couple more players and then we're just gonna go ahead and get started because it's all about the information not necessarily the Kahoot, and Tara's going to win if we don't get any more players. And AJ Teacher, that's two people. That makes a game. And Garrett is joining. If Garrett wins, we need to make sure that we note that accordingly. Garrett is one of our team members helping us with our production, and he already knows the answers. we got enough people. Bruce is in. Everyone's in. All right, let's Kahoot, Christina. Second step, questions, three, two, one. So scenario one, you are talking to a classmate in the hallway before school. She just had an argument with her best friend. You're listening to her with attention as she tells you how sad she's feeling. You understand how she feels. You felt sad after having an argument with a friend too. You are, you pick the best response here, Should be a next button, Christina. There we go. You're feeling happy that you are not her. You're having empathy for her. You're thinking she will not have many friends. Or you're wondering why she is so sad. on your previous experiences um, with having that emotion and you have an empathy. It's a great skill to teach kids. All right, question two. And Bruce, see Bruce, when you enter, you have to win. It's gonna be bad if the superintendent doesn't win. No pressure. Question two. You were having trouble paying attention when your teacher explained what to do for a social studies project. Now everyone is getting started and you don't know what you're supposed to do. The best thing to do is to, and Christina, if we could turn the music down a little bit. All right, the best thing to do when you're having problems in a social studies class. Just do the project the way you want. Assertively ask your teacher how to do it. Read a book instead. Wait quietly at your desk and hope someone comes to help you. All right. Bruce is still in the lead, and that's good. It's good. Bruce evaluates me. He's still going to do that. So we want Bruce to win. Question three. Some kids at the after school program are starting to play a board game. It looks like it could be fun. Which of the following is the best way for you to join in? You're going to pick the best response. Aggressively say that you know all about how to play the game a long time for them to ask you if you want to play. Ask a question about the game, then politely ask if you can play too. Or wait until they start playing and ask them to stop and let you play. Bethany, what do you think? See who the winner is. In third place, Team W. In second place, we got this. And in first place, is it, could it be? It's Bruce. 
Let's talk, learn, and have fun with Bruce and friends. Continues with Bruce winning. So Bethany, can you kind of give some more context about, you know, we saw some questions and that might give people an idea of what the learning looks like. Um, what can parents expect? What kind of specific skills other than the ones that we showed can, can parents expect if they engage with the second step curriculum while we're doing our remote learning? Yeah, just like with academic skills, kids are not born knowing how to join in a game. Um, so our, our parents do a great job teaching those skills at home, but we want to support that at school too. Um, and so make sure that they, it gives, instead of just saying, well, go make a friend, it breaks down, how do I make a friend? If that doesn't maybe necessarily come natural to me, this is how I can go make a friend. Um, or if I did miss hearing what the teacher said with instructions, how do I ask for help? Um, not only do I need to ask for help, but then how, what are the steps to do that? Um, and even using that word assertively of just, you know, not standing there waiting for someone to, to notice you need help, but saying what you need. Um, and so those are the kinds of skills that we're teaching through the second step curriculum, the teachers are and the counselors are doing. And so at home, it's going to break down what were those steps. So like how to make a friend, what were the steps? What are the steps when you have a problem? You do this first, and then you do that, and then you do the next thing. And so the parents can be using the same vocabulary at home as we're using at school. And we know there's a lot of power when we're using the same um, words at home and at school. And so those are things that you can continue to practice at home. And we know those things are coming up at home right now. So now is a great time for you to have access to those resources and listen to those songs as a family. Some of those songs are pretty funny. There's some really good dances that go along with them. Um, so have some fun with it. Um, and again, if you need help with any of that, please let your school counselor know. They'll be happy to help you. All right, everyone from your homes, give a round of applause to Bethany and all of the school counselors. Y'all have been doing amazing work to help support kids in this remote setting. We truly, truly appreciate y'all and the work that you're doing. Um, we are still waiting. Our student is going to rejoin us soon um, from Grandview Hills Elementary School, and we're going to actually talk mindfulness with her um, in a little bit. But to, while she gets logged back in, um, we'll go ahead and take a couple more questions. Um, seeing a lot of questions about um, yearbook and photos and spring photos and things like that, um, those are going to have to be directed to your individual campuses. I'm sure everyone's doing something different. Um, if somebody on our team can answer the yearbook question, um, I don't think that's something that is really going to be able to be handled or answered um, uh, at this level, but definitely reach out to your campus principal. I'm sure they can help connect you with the right answers um, regarding your books and spring photos and how to get those distributed. Um, there is a question about students being able to get items um, if we're not able to return to school. Um, right now, um, we're still trying to keep our buildings closed down. We gave an opportunity. Um, some, some staff were able to get into buildings um, to get materials. Um, we're being assured that um, the learning that's happening shouldn't require um, anything that might be left at school, but obviously as this thing evolves, um, we, that might change face for kids. So we'll definitely make sure if there is an opportunity um, to connect kids with, with, inform with their belongings, we will, um, we will do so in a way that's responsible to the social distancing requirements and to making sure that we can keep our buildings clean. Um, our custodial crew has been working um, to maintain the deep clean and sanitation of our buildings. And that's our focus right now, um, being able to answer those questions. Um, why we are going ahead and waiting, please go ahead and still um, submit some questions. We are happy to keep on answering. And there's Peyton. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to Peyton Johnson, who is a phenomenal fifth grader at Grandview Hills Elementary School. Um, I had the opportunity to meet Peyton, what was it, like five or six weeks ago, Peyton? It was a different mm -hmm. world, right? <laughs> and I got a chance to talk to her. We do a student voice podcast and actually just got to, to finish putting that together. And that's on our podcast feed. Awesome. And I wanted to bring Peyton as our first student to this Facebook Live because um, I think she's a, a, a smart young person in our world and can provide a lot of insight. But my first question for you, Peyton, and panel, jump in if you have any questions. Bruce, if you have questions for Peyton, but what are you reading, Peyton? You told me, we talked a lot about Wrinkle in Time the last time we sat down. 
Um, you mentioned about how you love to read. Are you reading anything good right now? Um, right now I'm reading the Babysitter's Club series. So what, for those who aren't familiar with the Babysitter's Club, what, what are those books and why, why are those, of the many options you might have, why are you drawn to those books? To those books? It's like I can connect to the books. So the books that I can connect to the most are the books that I have interest in because I understand the books more than books that I don't really understand or know what happen, has to happen in the books. So what's the, what's the Babysitter's Club book that you're reading right now? I'm reading the one where there's a girl that's moving and they think that the Babysitter's Club is going to have to end, but it really won't have to at the end because they find a way for them, for the girl to stay at the school and for all of them to stay friends. Very cool. Um, Peyton, the other thing that we talked about was mindfulness. And Grandview Hills has some special spaces and a teacher who um, has led you all in some lessons about mindfulness. Can you start off by just, for those who aren't familiar with the concept, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is staying in the present moment, not focusing about anything, like not being stressed out or not worrying about what you're gonna have for lunch or what you're gonna do for the rest of the day. You're just focusing on the present moment and staying calm. Have you been staying up on your mindfulness in these last couple weeks? I have. Mindfulness really helps out when I'm either stressed out, sad, or a little mad sometimes. So what, were, what are some things you're doing? What are some things that you learned? Um, Share with, the, share with the audience um, about, you have a teacher at Grandview Hills. Um, who is that teacher and what are some of the things she's taught you specifically that have helped you um, while we're doing this remote learning? Um, our teacher is Miss Lacey and things that she's taught me is brain training, which you're taking deep breaths and our finger method, which is mindfulness begins with me. And all of those techniques really help out because they're usually fast techniques and they calm you down, but it feels like you're just in a safe space and nothing really is happening around you. So I will tell you the other person I've met this year who's big on meditation and some of these mindful practices is our superintendent. Bruce, I'd love for you to share some of your experiences with meditation and, and mindfulness and maybe you and and Peyton can brainstorm some activities maybe we can do right here on our Facebook Live with all of our audience. Yeah, one of the things that uh, I'm excited about is uh, as part of our benefit package for our employees, uh, we have a new Headspace app, um, which is helping them to walk them through some of these activities of, of slowing down and, and meditating and, and learning some of the deep breathing when times get tough. And so I'm hoping that uh, in, in these challenging times, our employees at least are, are using that app as much as possible. Hey, Peyton, I wanted to ask you, uh, you, you know, what's been the biggest change for you as we've gone into this remote learning? What's, what's the one thing that you are, are experiencing that is very different from the way things were? Do you mean by when I was at school or at home? I'm confused. Yes, when you were at school and now that you're having to learn at home remotely, what's the biggest change? My biggest change is not being able to have that environment to where I have the mindfulness courtyard and the mindfulness library so I can actually practice. And I don't really get to keep up with my mindfulness as much. And it's just not the same do you miss your friends and your teachers i do a lot how are you coping with that it's okay because i get to do zoom calls with my teachers and zoom calls with my friends as well Tell us a little bit about the remote learning itself. Um, do you feel like we're providing good opportunities for you? I do. We have a lot of options and ways that are easy for us to learn and 
for us to be able to focus with our different options and knowing that if we are having a tough time with something, we can just move to the next thing. Do you feel like you're getting the support that you need at this time? Of course. So Peyton, if you had one bit of advice that you could give someone who's not familiar with mindfulness as a way to kind of get started, what would be, what would be that piece of advice? I'd say start early so you can have more time to learn about it and don't rush doing mindfulness because it takes time. Um, anybody else from our panel have a question for Peyton? to know what's been the most exciting for you. This is very different for all of us. Um, so what's been the most, the coolest thing that's happened um, for you during this time as we're learning from home? Um, I like the t times where I get to talk to my teacher and it's just me and my teacher. So I get to go at my own pace in the time that I have with my teachers. All right, Peyton, I want you to think, I want you to think about us because I know when we spoke, one of the things you shared with me was that you actually would lead some of the younger students in some mindfulness activities. So I want you to think of us, all of the people in the Zoom call and all of the people watching on Facebook, think of us as second graders or third graders or first graders. What would you be telling us if this was you leading the lesson? Hey, I tell you to take three deep, deep breaths breaths in and out slowly. And after that, I tell you to listen to the noises around you so you're cautious of what's happening and then clear out all those noises and voices. That's it. How does it work with some busy second graders? Well, second graders pay attention, but they also worry about other things. Because at my time, my classes, there's usually kids going through the hallway because it's almost time to leave school. So after all the classes that I've had with them, They've really built up their mindfulness skills and showing me that they are able to become mindfulness students next year and years after that. Anybody else have a final question for Peyton before we give her a virtual round of applause? A question. So I can tell that Peyton is really a leader on her campus, not only um, being brave enough to come onto Facebook Live with us, but also the work that she does with other kids. And I wonder what it is um, that has happened that has helped her become such a fantastic leader. My school leaders, like my principals and my mindfulness teacher and my assistant principal and every teacher there have really helped me be independent and be a teacher and a leader myself so I know how to be appropriate with the other people and be respectful with everybody at my school. All right, everyone from your homes, from your computers, give Peyton a round of applause. Thank you for joining us and thank Ooh. your mom for helping us connect with you, Peyton. Thank you. Thank you, Peyton. Great job. Thank you. All right, folks, we are still answering some questions. Um, we got um, Josh will be joining us. Josh Kaminsky um, played Javert in Les Miserables. 
at Rouse High School. I'm probably butchering my French accent right now. Um, and he is going to perform a song for us at the end of our broadcast. But until then, we're still taking questions. Carrie, I love the comment. Carrie wants you to know, Dr. Gehring, she's coming for your job. Peyton is coming for your job. Um, so you better watch out. She probably would have won the second step Kahoot if she were in it. Absolutely. Um, there's a question here for, and will probably be Krista or Jennifer to answer this one on Facebook. Um, what's the best way for high school parents to know what's required and what's not? My senior isn't being very clear. For example, are Zoom sessions required? I'm trying to not bug each teacher and I know we have a ton on our plates. Um, so Jennifer, Krista, some, um, Dr. Benz, somebody wanna chime in on what's required for kids right now? So what is required may differ um, based on the teacher. Right, and so based on the class that we're in. So right now what we're doing is we're doing asynchronous learning, which means that the students are sending the assignments out um, for the students to do, and they'll send them out at the beginning of the week, and the students will turn them towards the end of the week. So what that means is um, there may have some office hours that you can attend, and those could be optional, some may be required. The exception to that, though, is if your student is in a dual credit course, or an on-ramp they may have some required face time they need to do with some of their classes. Um, and so that would be the exception to some of our asynchronous learning that we are doing right now. The best way to know of what is optional and what is not is to actually reach out to your teacher though, to find out from them. So, Josh, if uh, you're still on here, get queued up because we're going to bounce to you. It looks like the questions have ceased. Um, so before we go to Josh Kaminsky to do as a song, I want to um, pass it off to our superintendent. Um, real quick, Christina, can you pull up the slide for the, um, before we talk to Bruce, the slide in our slide deck um, for the, the performance, the LISD performs that we're going to be doing. Um, So we know that there are so many um, spring events right now that might be being missed. We know, so Josh was nominated um, that previous slide. So we know Josh, for example, who we're gonna hear from here in a second, um, was nominated for a Greater Austin High School Musical Theater Award. Um, we know that spring concerts are on their way. Um, we have an audience for kids. So we're, we set up this flip grid um, for kids at home to submit um, video, audio of your songs, your singing, your performances, your, you know, your one act, anything that you were preparing, your monologues for drama, anything that you want to share, kids of all ages, we have a Flipgrid set up for LISD students and teachers. Um, go to flipgrid.com slash perform LISD, um, submit there, we'll share it here on one of our, our, our broadcasts, we'll share them on our social media channels. Um, you have thousands of people around that want to hear you perform. And although we're isolated and we can't physically be together, we can socially be together um, through the power of social media. And uh, before we go to Josh Kaminsky for our final performance, Bruce, any final words for the people on Facebook and at home? Yeah, thanks, Corey, for putting this together. And thank you uh, to our students for coming out today and sharing with us. Uh, it's incredible to have um, the, the presence of mind that I certainly wouldn't have had as a fifth grader to be able to be that articulate and, and that wise um, is, is really a fun, fun event to watch. So I'm looking forward to the performance that Josh is about to give us too. So just a word to everybody out there, just remember um, to keep safe, to stay well, to follow the guidelines that are out there. These are challenging times and critical times for us to connect together. And so we urge you to continue to connect with your teachers and um, make sure that your students are connecting with each other and with their teachers uh, because those relationships are the most important thing that we have. Um, we wish you all the best as we go forward in this. We will keep updating you with as much information as we can and as we make decisions. So thank you everybody for joining us today and let's hear from Josh. All right. Josh, can you share 
us welcome to our Facebook Live. Josh, can you share with us a little bit about the song you're about to perform? Um, and then we'll go ahead and let's hear it. All right, so I will be singing Stars from Les Miserables, and we, uh, in the song, Javert, who I play, is a police officer who's been hunting down Jean Valjean, or uh, Prisoner 24601, for the past 20 years now, and so he just realized that he let Valjean go, and so he's now talking to the stars, who he believes will have his answers, and he looks for guidance with them. Without further ado, Rouse High School senior, Josh Kaminsky. Out in the darkness, a fugitive running. Fallen from God, fallen from grace. God be my witness, I never shall yield till we come face to face, till we come face to face. He knows his way in the dark, mine is the way of the Lord. And those who follow the path of the righteous shall have their reward. And if they fall as loose of a fell, they fall in flame. Stars in your multitudes, scarce to be counted. Filling the darkness with order and light. You are the sentinels, silent and sure, keeping watch in the night, keeping watch in the night. You know your place in the sky. You hold your course and your aim. And each in your season returns and returns and is always the same. And if you fall as Lucifer fell, the flame, the sword. And so it must be, for so it is written on the doorway to paradise that those who falter and those who fall must pay the price. Lord, let me find him that I may see him safe behind bars. I will never rest until then. This I swear, this I swear by the stars. Thank you. Thank you to Josh. Thank you to our panel. Thank you to our audience for tuning in. This will be on YouTube tomorrow and on our podcast feed as well. So please share it. Check it out. Um, Want to say thank you to our crew, Christina and Garrett and Daniel behind the scenes helping us put this on. Um, we'll be back next week with a new and different show. Um, also, one last shout out. Uh, LEAF, our nonprofit organization that supports the district, is coming to us looking to get people to different ways in our community to help us some more support us if you want to be a part of the moments to support teachers in this time go to leaftext.org slash donate um, to help our nonprofit partner as we partner to continue to make great things happen for kids thank you all and have a great rest of your night and a great wednesday and rest of your week <laughs>